Welcome to The Motivational Midwife. I'm Lynn Jones, and today we're going to look at your analysis. So let's have a look at your analysis. So really, uh, what is it when we're, we're doing this? We're testing freshly voided urine. So um, years and years ago, it used to be used to be asked to um, bring the first specimen of the day, but that's not really what we've what we do now because we've realised actually, if urine's sitting there for quite a long time, it does change, and your results will not be as accurate. So we want freshly voided urine and we're looking at the characteristics of that urine. So what colour is it? How clear is it? Has it got any bits in? Uh, does it smell? It's mostly made up of water. And we're looking at the composition of it because what are the other bits, the other 4% that's not water are things like urea and uric acid. Um, and those things you may be um, familiar to you when you are... Um, looking at things like preeclampsia we're looking at some of these uh levels within uh both the blood and the urine and there's some cellular components in there so you'll have sort of some leukocytes and there's tiny tiny amounts of protein and glucose so normally a normal urine testing you shouldn't pick up protein and glucose so if we are picking those up it's an indicator that there is something wrong so when would we test urine um, as part of any holistic assessment on admission to a hospital? Um, certainly when she's in labour um, and in labour it can um, it certainly help you uh, determine uh, whether she's running out of energy or not if she's using all her energy stores up because she'll become ketotic. Part of our routine antenatal assessments at each visit, we are testing the urine for both protein and glucose. And if they have some maternal conditions such as diabetes or blood pressure undergoing, they've already got pre-existing uh, blood pressure issues. If they're on anticoagulant treatment, you may be um, testing the urine much more frequently. And if they've got any clinical symptoms uh, of, of a urinary tract infection or if they've come in with raised blood pressure, you would be testing the urine, uh, certainly for proteinuria there or the blood pressure. So what will you need? Well, you need um, some urine testing sticks. Uh, and the ones you probably are most familiar with are these multi-sticks, um, which are the ones we're going to go through today in some detail. Although you'll, you'll often find community midwives now just have a small pot that has just testing for protein and glucose in for most um, routine testing and they may have multi-sticks for if they uh, suspect there is a urinary tract infection or something else going on. Um, you'll need a container for the woman to provide the sample in and obviously you'll need your personal protective equipment, your PPE. So if we start looking at the the significance of the various components. So the colour of the urine, obviously the darker the urine is, the more concentrated it is. So it would obviously tell you that she's a little bit dehydrated. She's maybe not drinking enough. Um, and if she's, uh, if it's very pale yellow, she's obviously well hydrated. If there's an amber or a brown or a greeny tinge, it could be that there is um, a bilirubin uh, present in it. Um, and if it's red, it's deemed to be hematuria or bleeding in, in the urine. And that that's not normal, although it can be, um, you sometimes see this immediately post cesarean section where there may have been some trauma, or as you've um, inserted a catheter, urinary catheter, sometimes you can get a little bit of ble bleeding there uh, um, if it has been um, perhaps a difficult insertion. Certain diets will alter um, the colour of the urine, so things like rhubarb and beetroot will often turn it quite red. 
um, and some drug, drugs. Sulfasalazine is one that's often used in um, sort of arthritis -y type uh, disorders, and that can make the urine quite orange. Uh, so sometimes as well, certain drugs can make it smell um, slightly odd as well. Pseudomonas, which is a pretty nasty infection, will turn the urine green, and uh, some dyes. Uh, so if uh, they they not necessarily pregnant women, but people in general have undergone um, certain types of scans where dyes have been used to highlight either the organ or the vessels that they're trying to look at. So that can change the um, colour of the urine as well as it's excreted from the body. So. As urine becomes more um, concentrate, then the, the smell of urine be it increases, it becomes more, uh, more obvious. Um, and strong flavoured foods can, uh, and the drugs, as we've said, can um, affect the smell of the urine. The more uh, urine is allowed to stand, um, the more ammo ammonia breaks down and you have that really pungent smell, urine um, smell. If the urine uh, smells quite sweet, it could be um, ketotic um, and uh, phenylketonuria, uh, which is something you're probably familiar with from the newborn blood spot, um, urine can um, have quite a musty smell to it. Um, and if it smells of maple syrup, that, <laughs> that which is exactly um, the disorder it is actually uh, highlighting, if there is a disorder which again you're probably familiar with from the newborn blood spot called maple syrup um, disease or disorder and it's a metabolic uh, disorder. So we're going to work our way down that multi-stick uh, and look at all the um, elements that are on it. So specific gravity and pH, well the normal specific gravity is, is between 1.005 and 1.030 and the pH normally between 4.5 and 8. So if you've got low, um, low levels, uh, low pH, and uh, it can indicate uh, that there's uh, excessive calcium or um, low potassium um, or that uh, she's just weeing an awful lot. Okay, there's been a lot of diuresis. Um, high levels can mean that she's perhaps dehydrated. Uh, there may be uh, high levels of uh, glycosuria or proteinuria. So bilirubin is usually due to some sort of liver disease. Um, and certain drugs can give a false positive on, on this. And as I was saying, you know, you can get a false negative if the urine has been sitting around for a long time before you've tested it. Which again, that's why we need a fresh specimen to test. If there is blood showing up in the, um, in the urine, it can be indicative of infection. It could also be uh, trauma. Um, if there are uh, kidney stones, that can sometimes um, cause trauma, which can cause some uh, hematuria to show up. And obviously, it can be contaminated as well, particularly for women in labour. If they have, um, if they had a bit of a show, and they go to pass uh, urine for to provide a specimen for you. It can often be contaminated with, uh, with the show. And obviously rectal bleeding as well can contaminate specimen. So glucose will show up if the blood sugar levels rise um, or if the absorption in the um, kidneys lowers. If the body is under stress, this can impact as well. Uh, women with diabetes uh, or pancreatitis or um, Cushing syndrome, which is one where there's really high uh, cortisol levels or long-term steroid use. These can all um, impact on glucose showing up in the urine on testing. Um, and ketones probably the one we're most familiar with, particularly when looking after women in labour. And really it's a, a byproduct of fat metabolism. So when the body is running out of energy, it starts um, using burning up its fat stores. Um, and for those of you that remember the Atkins diet many years ago, that that's really the principle in which it worked on. Um, was really trying to get the body to 
um, burn fat as opposed to um, carbohydrates. So a byproduct of that is ketones. Um, and so people who are starving, starvation, so they don't eat, if they you know, are women of um have got hyperemesis or a lot of vomiting, particularly in labour, um, are likely to, to become ketotic quite quickly. Certain um, disorders where they have uh, malabsorption um, of nutrients can also cause women to be ketotic and obviously diabetics um, can show ketones and, and that can be quite serious for them. And again, some drugs can give a false uh, positive. So leukocytes, uh, there's enzymes that are not normally found in urine. So if you have leukocytes showing up, it would be very suggestive of a urinary tract infection, although it could be contamination from vaginal discharge. Um, you can get quite a lot of false positives if there are high levels of either protein glucose or axillic acid. And nitrates, so definitely urinary tract infection. So if you've got leukocytes and nitrates and a bit of blood and a bit of protein, you can be fairly sure that that woman has a um, urinary tract infection. It's very common with cystitis and cystitis is inflammation of the bladder. Um, uh, and if the, uh, oh, my misspelling there, I've missed an A out of bladder. If the, if the bladder's been, um, the urine's been sitting in the bladder for sort of, four hours you'll get you'll get those nitrates showing up um, if the strip if the test strip is left out um, if out of the box or the lids left off the box um, then the actual test strips can be affected so that you will get false negatives so it's why it's quite important to just take the strip out you're going to use and then put the lid back on the box so protein, as we said, protein and, sh and glucose, um, the molecules are usually they're only present in very, very tiny amounts because the molecule is too big um, to go through that filtration. Um, but with um, certain diseases um, or injury or particularly raised blood pressure, the permeability of the um, vessels changes so that those larger molecules can escape. It could show up due to contam contamination um, and really we would be looking at um, sending uh, a specimen off for protein creatinine ratio um, in respect of uh, excluding uh, preeclampsia. Um, Eurobilinogen, it's uh, a byproduct that's converted from bile, and there are usually small amounts. Um, if it's larger, then you would be concerned that either there is um, some liver abnormalities or there is excessive hemolysis, so the red cells are being broken down um, excessively uh, more than we would be anticipating. So how are we going to test? Okay, so you need to make sure that your reagent strips, your box of or your you know box of strips are in date, that they haven't uh, expired because that will affect the accuracy of the tests. That you have your personal protective equipment. Um, that you insert, so it's freshly voided um, urine. That you insert the strip to cover all the pads and then tap. The excess away and so keep that strip um, horizontal don't tip it up um, because what will happen then is that the it will flow into each different pad and then you'll get um, inaccurate readings and if you look on the um, bottle it will tell you at how many seconds to read each one because there's a different from 30 seconds up to about two minutes um, that you actually read the result off. And then obviously, most importantly, at the end of it all, you document your findings. And there we have it, your analysis. I hope you found that useful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. And I look forward to seeing you next time.